All right, where should I start if I want to lose weight or gain muscle? It's a question that I get asked on the regular almost every day. And I want to talk about what those first steps should look like and how you achieve them. So all that and more, strap in, get ready for episode 192. Let's go. The future of fitness. How do you gain muscle mass? Fitness is not complicated. It's simple when you break it down. There's so much information out there. No fads, no diets, just plain simple habits. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Parody, and I will be your host. And if this is your first time tuning into the show, welcome. So glad you are here for what may be a corny maybe not episode. <laughs> but basically, if this is your first time, like I try to break down fitness in simple bite sized pieces, because I don't think that fitness should be complicated. And I try to keep these short and brief and to the point. So welcome. For my return listeners, you know what this is about. And I appreciate you coming back time and time again to listen. I love just being able to spend this time with you. And if you want to connect with me on a more personal level, please text the word podcast to 706 706- Two 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 seven five five one. That is a actual number that I check a couple times a week, and you can write me messages on there, write me questions, and I will respond. Just give me a few days because it's not something I'm on every single day. All right. With that being said, let's dive in. So you've just decided that you want to get in better shape. You know, maybe you want to drop a few pounds, lose some body fat percentage, uh, gain some muscle. You know, get stronger. Kind of that general thing. You know, typically most people who come to me they want to lose a little bit of weight and gain muscle. That's kind of the the thing. So I'm going to kind of address that if that's you. And even if it's not, you're going to get benefits out of this discussion. So what are the first steps you need to be taking? You know, where do you begin in this wide world of supplements and fitness and workout programs and just can be overwhelming? Let's be honest. There's so much garbage out there that doesn't work. So many fad diets and crash diets and just things that people have created as money making schemes. And it can be just overwhelming. Like where the hell do I begin? Well, I want to tell you and the first thing is start with where you are at, you know, maybe you don't have access to a gym, maybe you don't have a lot of money to be spending on crazy nutrition plans. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When I started, I had a bench and a few weights in my room, I was broke. I didn't have <laughs> the ideal situation. I worked out at an apartment gym for probably the first four years of my physical journey. I had some weights at the house and I had my apartment gym and that was it. I didn't have a full blown gym. I remember the first time I ever got an actual gym membership. I was blown away when I walked in. I was like, oh my gosh, look at all this freaking equipment. They have everything. Well, duh, it's a gym. And I was just used to these small little apartment gyms. So that's another story. I digress. So you've got to start with where you're at. Don't think that because you don't have a gym membership that you can't gain muscle because you absolutely can. You know, we live in a, an amazing, amazing time to where literally with our computers or phones, we can access how to videos on anything. And whether you have only resistance bands, whether you have only your body and a backpack, whether you have a few weights, you can find some type of workout plan to follow with only that. If you're looking for a good place to start, I recommend youtube.com slash bones to bulk. I have a lot of different workout videos on there. Um, on all ranges of whether it's just body weight, whether it's just dumbbells, whether it's resistance bands or whatnot. So start with where you're at. You don't have to have the perfect workout plan. You don't have to have the perfect split. The only thing I would suggest starting off is break your muscle groups up and work out at least five days a week. That's it. Like, don't get overwhelmed. As you hammer this stuff down, you can then start fine tweaking things and start learning more and start growing more. But don't get overwhelmed with having to do more than that to start off with. Just start getting in the habit of lifting regularly or working out regularly. That's the key is building that habit. So regardless of whether you have a gym or not, start doing something, even if it's body weight exercises every day, start building that habit. With food, I get that food can be a lot to take in. And don't get me wrong, food is something that I still am constantly studying and learning more about all the time. So it's this never ending learning phase. Now with food, when I started, I was 
kind of broke. You know, I was a typical single, you know, young dude who worked at Starbucks and I didn't have a lot of money. My tip money usually from Starbucks, you know, if you if you're not familiar with Starbucks, you make your 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 salary and then you get tip money weekly, which is split between all the all the workers. If you've never tipped Starbucks employees, I encourage you to do so because that was my grocery money each week. And so it wasn't a ton. You know, all my regular money went to pay my bills, my my car my car insurance, my apartment. Again, again, they, like I was broke. Uh, and so, yeah, I had to figure out how am I going to eat, you know, healthy to gain muscle on a very, very shoestring budget. And I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's doable. First off, I would try to get a lot of chicken. I would buy the big packs of chicken breast. It was just me, so they lasted quite a while. And then I would get very inexpensive carbs. So things like rice or pasta are super cheap. I mean, you can buy bags, five pound bags of rice that will last you almost the entire month for a couple bucks. It's crazy. Um, pasta is the same way. Pasta goes a long way and it's super cheap. So, you know, those things that aren't very expensive but go a long way are key. Potatoes are really good for that as well. Potatoes will go a long way and they're not very expensive. So that's kind of your carbs covered. And then vegetables, you know, you don't have to have these fancy crazy salads although don't get me wrong I love a good salad but you know just buying some zucchinis and squashes and cutting them up or some frozen vegetables I mean is fresh better than frozen sure but frozen usually lasts longer uh, so there's not as much waste so again if you're on a budget that's a good thing and they're they're pretty inexpensive you can usually pick up a bag of frozen vegetables for a buck so get creative with your meals you know don't feel like you're trapped in this bubble and can only eat you know, wild caught salmon and in season vegetables. Like there's nothing wrong with that stuff. Don't get me wrong. But I get if that's not something that's within your budget plan, like because it wasn't in mine for a very long time. And in all honesty, I still am very cheap and try to get away with buying groceries as cheap as possible. So I still don't buy into a lot of that stuff. With your food, though, start small. You know, don't feel like you have to totally change out your entire cupboards. Cupboards, that's kind of an old school word. Pantry, is that better? What else do we call it? Pantry, cupboards, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Don't feel like you have to go in there and just toss everything at once and get a whole new setup because you don't. Start one thing at a time. When you run out of something, be like, okay, next time when I go to replace that, instead of getting, you know, the Lucky Charms for breakfast, let's get some oatmeal. Another very inexpensive food. And I'll have oatmeal for breakfast. And I won't change anything else. I'll just try that for a couple weeks and, and get used to having oatmeal. And then maybe in week two, you're like, you know what? I'm out of these Oreos. I'm going to get some rice cakes and peanut butter instead. Something else is pretty inexpensive. So, you know, it, you, it's these baby steps. And we've got to realize that it's going to take time. It's not an overnight process. It's not something that you just magically snap your fingers and Mary Poppins shows up and makes everything all better. It doesn't happen. So take these small steps. Don't get overwhelmed by all the different things out there. Start where you are at. Start with what you have, what you have available, what you have on hand. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to have a ton of money. You don't have to have access to crazy fancy gyms. Like you can do a lot with a very little. It just takes reframing that mental space that mindset and thinking, okay, this is what I have and I have to make the best of it with this. And it is doable. It absolutely is. So don't ever feel like, you know, you don't have the money, you don't have the resources, you don't have whatever to start. I'm telling you, if I did on my meager Starbucks salary with my tip money for groceries and working out in my apartment gym, then you can too. All right. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend about it. You know, just one person. Say, hey, I think you might get something out of this. Share with them the link. I would be greatly appreciative of that just so we can spread this message and this podcast. It would mean the world to me. Remember, no matter what walls you're facing, what struggles are currently in your life or that you're trying to battle or trying to overcome, you can overcome them. I promise you, you can. Stick with it. Stay consistent. Remember, you've got this.